This beauty is the Penn BBS 487 in Moon River. It comes in Penn BBS's standard cardboard box with 487 on it and then Moon River also on the tag. And inside of that is their standard Penn BBS black flapped cardboard box with the instructions on how to fill the 487 and the pen itself under a deep layer of foam. The cap comes off in one and three quarter turns and there's a step inside the cap to seal off the nib when you cap the pen. The nib itself says Pen BBS since 2005, F China. There is no cap band, but there is an insignia on the back. It's kind of hard to see, but it says 2005 Pen BBS 487, Shanghai, China. I had not noticed it until I'd had the pen for a little while. The end cap says Shanghai 487 Pen BBS. I really like these little extra touches. You can see the threads where the clip is attached to the cap, but I'm not going to take that apart. I want a functioning pen for this review. And here you can just barely see the magnet that's inside of the cap. This material is just gorgeous. It's a combination of green, white, blue, a little bit of purple, and some sparkles. It has the standard BBS sword type clip. It's hard to pick up on camera, but here in the section you can see a little bit of the blue purple kind of shimmer that's mixed in with the green and white. Here's the pen in my hand not posted and the pen in my hand posted. It's a little back heavy when you do this. I'm not really sure you need to because it seems to be long enough even if you had a really big hand. Here's the very thin fins on their feed and the tip of their nib. It's kind of upturned like a food end nib. Here's the pen disassembled on a piece of feather pyrite. There's the end cap, the barrel, the piston with the magnet in it, the section with a O-ring, and then the nib unit with two O-rings. Pen BBS puts a lot of O-rings on their stuff, which is pretty nice. And then the cap. I have and did a review on the Pen BBS 492 Year of the Rat. I really liked the rat stuff that was all over it in the really pretty kind of pastel copper color. And I was really intrigued by the magnetic filling system. And in my review, I had problems trying to fill the pen with it, and now it is totally just kind of crapped out. It's still a beautiful pen, and I use it as an eyedropper now. If you plan on using these as an eyedropper, make sure the piston's all the way up at the top instead of taking it out. I'm not sure the end cap can hold ink. I guess you could put silicone grease on it, but the piston is pretty tight there, so you can just push it all the way to the end with like a chopstick or something, and then just syringe in ink inside the barrel. So you're thinking, why did you get the 487 if the 492 kind of crapped out on you? I got it mainly because it's a beautiful pen, and I figured if the magnetic system didn't work, I could also eyedropper this one. And I was also hoping that maybe they improved it. And they did. This is without ink. When you do add ink to the equation, it becomes a little trickier, but it is a vast improvement. At first, I thought the problem with the 492 was maybe the magnet got old and weaker. But magnets don't become significantly weaker over a few months. And just to test it out, I used that magnet on my new pen. And well, yeah, I had ink in here and I'm just squirting the ink out. But you can see even the old magnet works on this 487. And let me just get you really worried here while I squirt out some more ink with the new magnet. And you can see it works just fine. I'm thinking it's not so much the magnet itself, but maybe the material or how thin the walls are inside of the barrel that makes the magnet work better. 
And also the end cap is not magnetized like in the 492. I'm not sure if that makes a difference or not. But I'm thinking that maybe it's the material of the barrel or the thickness of the wall. That ink's really bugging you, isn't it? Well, it's a good thing it's on Tamoa River paper. No problem. If you saw my 492 video, you know I have to do a couple of these magnetic pranks. Beware. Now for some comparisons. The problem with having two magnetic pens is they keep sticking to each other, so I have to keep them separated a bit. Capped, it's the same size as the 492. I was really surprised. It felt like when I first saw the 487 that it was a lot smaller and slimmer, but it's not. Also uncapped, they're the same size. The sections are almost exactly the same, and the nibs are the same size, but for some reason, it might be an optical illusion. The nib looks slightly larger on the year of the rat pen. And uncapped, it looks like it's the same size as the 355, and the sections look almost identical. Cap, they're about the same size. The 355 is just a little bit longer because of that lucite looking cap, and they both have the same clip. It dwarfs a Pilot Prera, but pretty much well any pen does that. Capped, it's longer than a Pilot Kakuno. And uncapped, they're about the same size, except for the nib is smaller on the Kakuno. Let's see what's cooking on the oven. Oh, a couple of pens. Sorry. Let's ink up the pen with a couple of inks. The first one is called Lichens, which is a pigment ink from Kakimori. And I didn't have too much trouble with it. You just kind of have to fiddle with it a bit, but it seems to be working much better. This ink is a flat olive green. It has no sheen, no shine, no sparkle, none of that stuff. At first, my pen was a little dry, so I fiddled with the nib a little bit with the brass shim, and now it is super smooth and super wet. It's a real gusher, and I'm really enjoying the food ed tip aspect of it. The reverse writing portion of it's pretty scratchy, and I wouldn't use it in that manner. I got this Pen BBS adapter for both the unit and feed from FNF. So I'm going to take out the nib unit. I'm living dangerously, there's still ink in the pen. And then I'm going to put this Platinum F nib into the nib unit. Here you can see they're about the same size. The problem with like say a number six Jovo nib is that it's a little bit too long and I had one stuck in there for a little while while I pried it back out. And then I'll screw the F and F nib unit back into the pen. And it works great. Compared to the Pen BBS Fine Nib, it is a lot finer and has a little more feedback. Here is some writing with the original Pen BBS Nib. It's that ink lichens and it looks really great. It looks almost like a medium nib. Here is a page of writing with the Platinum Nib and you can see that it's much more finer and of course the ink came out a lot lighter. I'll drip some water on a page of this Lichens ink and I let the water sit on there until it completely dried out and there was just no lifting at all. It's totally waterproof. Next we'll try the pen with some normal ink. This is Lennon Toolbar's Autumn Crab. But wait, do you need a tissue? It comes with two pens. I did warn you. To complicate things a bit, this bottle is half full. Last time I had some problems filling the 492 with a half full bottle because you kind of have to tilt it to get it so where you can reach the magnet in order to fill it. One of the things I noticed after multiple fillings of this pen is that I could hear air escaping from the end cap when I didn't have it tightened down. So to help it along, I filled the pen without the end cap screwed in. This filling is in real time and it worked out pretty good. And I'll screw the end cap back in. 
and check out how it writes with this ink. This is an incredibly smooth nib and all three inks that I used on it today were fairly wet inks so my nib was just skating across the paper. I feel like my handwriting is a little bit worse when I have a really smooth nib but if you like really smooth nibs this one's for you. And the last ink we're going to try is a lot of people's favorite, Jacques Herbon's Emerald de Chavour, a shimmering ink. But look, Ma, no hands. And again, this fill is in real time. And while I'm filling this, I'd like to dispel another magnet myth. Magnets aren't really a real danger to your computer unless you have like a giant one and you lay it on your hard drive for a long time. And again, it writes beautifully and smoothly. I'd like to go over a little bit on how I clean the pen efficiently. I take off the section and then take off the end cap and then put that in a glass so I don't lose it down the drain. I unscrew the nib unit and rinse that in the section underwater. I use a small brush to pop out the piston and rinse that off and put it in a glass and then rinse out the barrel. After drying the outside, I dry the inside of the barrel with some Q-tips from both ends. And then I dry off the piston and put it in right where the section meets the barrel so I don't have to use the magnet to bring the piston down. I dry them off and then I screw the nib unit back into the section and the section back into the barrel. The Pen BBS 487 has a really interesting filling system that's a lot of fun but it's a little tricky. Its saving grace is that it's a beautiful pen for a very reasonable price that you can end up eyedroppering very easily. The nib with a little bit of fiddling is super, super smooth. And with a little bit of management, you can use different nibs with this pen. The 487 is currently for sale on Etsy for $32. That alone makes this pen a really great deal. Add to that the really beautiful resin and you may need to make this your next pen purchase.